What's up everybody? This is Missy from Lansing Hoops. Welcome to week one of our core challenge. Today we're going to cover some waist hooping basics. So as you begin your waist hooping journey, remember it's not the hoop that matters. It's your comfort level. If you like a bigger, heavier hoop, go for it. And if you like hooping with a smaller hoop, that's fine too. Okay, several years ago, I made a waist hooping tutorial, and it's my highest viewed video on YouTube. I'll link to it in the description comments below. But today, I'm going to cover some new tips that I didn't know about and I didn't fully understand back when I made that video. So go ahead and take your hoop, I'm gonna use my big hoop, and put it on your waist. Now remember, last week in our intro to core challenge video we talked about the three rules of hoop piece now, if you haven't signed up for our core challenge you can do that at lansinghoops.com you'll get the intro video that covers in depth some of the rules that we're going to go over today on waist hooping so with your hoop on your waist thinking about the three rules of hoop piece the first rule is p pulse or move with purpose so when we're waist hooping if you're just holding your hoop like this, try pushing your belly in and out or side to side. Notice that the hoop stays level when you do this. Now, when you start moving your belly button around in a circle or in a hula motion, look at what happens to the hoop. So by following the first rule of hoop piece, pulse or move with purpose, we make sure that our hoop stays on our body in this flat plane. And that helps us keep control of the hoop and allows us to respond to what's happening rather than react to it. So wind up your hoop, give it a push and pulse back and forth or side to side. Okay. The second tip I have for finally being able to nail waist hooping is the E in hoop piece. And that is, take it easy. The hoop is an extension of your body. So whatever you're doing, the hoop is going to be doing too. So with your hoop on your body, if you become rigid and you start wanting and forcing your hoop to go because you just can't make it go around, it's just not going to go around. You have to relax, drop your shoulders, breathe in, breathe out. <sighs> Wind up, remembering to pulse, rule number one, pulse. Rule number two, take it easy, gently push, gently push, push, gently. You don't have to push hard. Breathing in and out. Okay, the last thing that you need to know when you're trying to waist hoop is to remember to keep your abs and your core engaged. Third rule of hoop piece, A-C-E, keep your abs and your core engaged. Take a deep breath. Let the breath go, stay where you are. Shoulders back, chest up. Tummy sucked in, belly sucked in. Everything is aligned. Okay, we're going to push. Now remember, keeping our abs and core engaged means that we trust the hoop to go where, we're, where we expect it to go and to not do anything else. So the number one thing that I see students do when they start waist hooping is go like this. Oh look, it's working. And the hoop falls to the floor. And the reason that happens is that as soon as they look to see that the hoop is working, 
their back is no longer aligned. Their head comes down, their bellies fold forward, their butts stick out. Everything starts to sink down. And the hoop does that with it. You can see my hoop is bending now towards the floor. And that's what happens when you look at the hoop while you're waist hooping, either because you're impressed that you finally make it, made it work or because you're trying to see what you're doing to make it happen. Rather than looking, focus on keeping everything aligned. Trust that the hoop will go where it's supposed to go. Wind up, give it a spin, pulse, take it easy. Keep your abs and your core engaged, standing up straight. Breathing in and out. When we attempt to follow the first rule of hoop piece, which is pulse or move with purpose, we talk about pulsing your belly in and out or moving your hips side to side and never rounding around. So we're going to talk about stances. You can stand like this with your feet side to side, shoulder width apart or a little bit wider, pushing your hips or pushing your waist or you can stand in a front to back stance with one foot in front. In this instance, you really want to focus on moving your belly and not your shoulders or your knees, but rather pushing your belly in and out. Now, my personal favorite stance for waist hooping is somewhere in the middle. I like to stand off to the corner, not totally on the side, not totally in front, but kind of off over here in this front corner. That allows me to keep my hips in line with each other where they're supposed to be and push my belly in and out rather than focusing on my shoulders or my knees, which causes a lot of extra movement. The next tip that I have is that sometimes it's easier to move in circles while you're spinning the hoop. So, what I mean is when I waist hoop, a lot of times I naturally turn in the same direction of the hoop. Now I don't have to do that, but if I turn with the hoop, it's sort of like slowing down the momentum of the hoop and it can make it easier to keep the hoop on your waist when you first begin. Alternatively, if you stand still while you're hooping without moving with the current, it will become a little bit more difficult to keep the, the hoop up. And if you turn in the opposite current, so I spin to the right, if I turned counterclockwise or to the left with my body, that would be incredibly difficult to keep the hoop up. Some people can do it, but I think it's really hard. So, when you're waist hooping, remember, spinning with the current is the easiest. Standing still is medium. And spinning reverse current is very hard. Okay, now the last tip that I can give you has to do with handedness. And just like your hands, whether you're left-handed or right-handed, you also have a first and second hoop current or a dominant side that you like to hoop to. Now, most of the time, not always, but most of the time, if you are right-handed, you'll spin to the left. And if you're left-handed, you'll spin to the right. So if I'm facing the same direction as you, most of the time, if I write with this hand, my right hand, my hoop goes left. Or, if I write with my left hand, my hoop will almost always go right. There's a good chance that this is true for you too. However, about 10% of the people break that rule and they spin in the same direction as their dominant hand. If you're not sure which way you wanna make your hoop go, just put it on your waist and see which way you'd naturally try to wind up and let go. If you truly can't tell a difference between sides, you might be hoop ambidextrous, or your dominant side is just taking a little bit of time to show itself. You can try the handedness rule, try spinning left if you're, if you're right-handed, or right if you're left-handed,
Or you can do what all of us should be doing and practice hooping in both directions. I hope these tips for waist hooping helped you. I will link to my other waist hooping tutorial where I give some more tips in the description below. And just a reminder, if you would like to learn more in secrets to on-body core hooping, such as neck hooping, knee hooping, ankle hooping, or nose hooping, sign up for our eight-week core challenge at lansinghoops.com slash core challenge, and we'll get you all set up.